I could be wrong on this, but I think underneath it all, men want to be told how the cow ate the cabbage. Now that's that's the southern term. <laughs> Did you push record? <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning back into Second Act TV. Uh, I'm happy to welcome Daryl Gurney back one more time for our segments on love and relationships after 50 and how we can improve the way men and women communicate. Daryl, thanks for joining me again. Thank you. As a quick reminder, Daryl is a relationship coach, love and relationship coach, a career coach, and he's the founder of The Back 40, a platform that uh, helps us live our best life in our second half. And uh, as a matter of fact, you have a book coming out. We'll link to all that information so you know people can uh, pick, that, pick all that up and read about it for themselves. Uh, in our last segment, of course, we'll link to those as well. We were talking about men and, and why men don't listen and how they can improve their listening skills to improve their relationship. Mm -hmm. And you brought up a great point, is that it's not so much that men don't listen, it's that our, the women don't speak up to where a man can't, even if he wants to listen, maybe not hearing what, what we want them to understand. I, I was one of those women in my marriage, and, and I know I contributed to that. So talk about that. You coach a lot of women just on this topic. How do we improve how we communicate and, and be heard? Well, first off, I don't think my mom will ever see this, so I'll share something. <laughs> But I think what uh, shaped me early in life was a feeling that, and you know, I grew up in Southeast Texas, Friday Night Lights. It's you know, you know, it's it's a male kind of you know dominated kind of society and stuff like that. At least when I grew up, and uh, I kind of grew up with this idea that my mom was under my dad's thumb, mm. and. Uh, and again, not wrong. My mom's not wrong. She's a product of her generation and everything too. But I know that it kind of shaped me. And so I've always been very interested in women uh, being empowered to you know, express their highest and greatest self. And probably because of that, uh, in my uh, years as a coach, I tend to attract, in whether it's on the business side of things or on the personal coaching side of things, women wanting to express their voice wanting to get their voice out. My wife, we just got married a year ago. Um, you know, there's there's a story around how, you know, we got together. She got connected with the Back 40 uh, original manuscript, and she had a breakthrough out of reading the original manuscript, which had her express her voice and get a divorce. So it kind of comes down to, you know, what we're talking about. So um, I'm not going to say I have all the answers here, but I, but I think society... Uh, sets women up to where what tends to happen is that urge to emerge and really, you know, have life go along with their terms doesn't come until 45, 50, 55, something like that. Because they're focused a lot of times, and again, this is, I'm not meaning to grossly gen generalize, but, you know, they're, they're kind of the main ones bringing up the family and getting the kids taken care of and all that kind of stuff. And it's not until 40 or something like that where it's kind of like, okay, well, where am I at? And if the marriage or the communication hasn't you know, been that great up until that point, then that's where revolutions start to happen. Right, and exactly. I see women have revolutions. Well, how do we, how do, so what do we do? What, what can we tell our viewers that, that say exactly that? Yeah, I, I, how do I get my voice out? How do I speak up? Get outside your comfort zone to be heard. Now, here's the thing. Get to know yourself, okay? But the point being is, you realize that to have your voice heard will be uncomfortable, but going there anyhow and standing in the way it works for you, it look, two things are gonna happen. A man does listen and starts to listen, and by the way, I've been with my wife five years. I've done all this personal development. She's got me listening in a way I never have before because she's done so much work on herself, okay? I could be wrong on this, 
But I think underneath it all, men want to be told how the cow ate the cabbage. Now that's, that's a Southern term. But <clears throat> in other words, they do actually respect, you know, a woman who, you know, expresses herself and stands in that. But if a guy has gotten along so long without listening, without hearing, you know, the, uh, the uh, subtle, passive aggressive hints, things like that, just know that it's never going to be comfortable. But know that if you wait until it all bottles up, both of you are screwed. Yeah. No, yeah, no. But exactly. Well, and uh, somebody else I talked to, both well, Paige and uh, another a relationship coach, is when you one, you know, figure out what is it that you want to be heard about, and then have a have a clear. Uh, go ahead. Do you want to? Did I well, something? this is what I was meaning to say a minute ago, and I went off a different direction. But because my wife's done so much personal development, she communicates responsibly. Mm -hmm. Now that's a real key thing, because the tendency could be to just rant and yeah. especially and bicker when and bitch. Which what? Yeah. So the point is, is what you just said is really key. What is it that you want to be heard? And be very straight about it. Don't, you know, uh, sugarcoat it. Things like that. And ask your man, look, I need you to hear me about some things. Are you are you in a, t a place where you can listen to me? And if he says, uh, yeah, and, th and then another good thing to say would be, look, I request that you listen to me and not respond and actually just hear what I have to say. I request that you not interrupt and you just listen to what's going on with me or some things I want to say. Are you willing to do that? Now, again, if he hasn't fainted, you know, like in the last segment we talked about, right? But it's kind of like being responsible to make sure that your voice is heard versus in the middle of something, spouting off something that, you know, ticked you off yesterday or something like that. In other words, setting the environment and there's a training of your man. It's kind of like in the corporate world, they say manage up. And I'm not saying women need to manage up because the man's not a hire. But I am saying train your man on what good uh, effective communication is. And it's not, I'm going to yell this at you. And then you're going to listen to see what's wrong about what I said. And you're going to yell this back at me. Instead of making him wrong that he doesn't listen, do whatever you can to train a man to listen. Well, and if there's love and willingness left, be it a, a, an older relationship or a longer, I should say, or a newer one, then, then it's, it, there's a, you know, it can work out. And then two is, you know, if you're listening to this, you go, you know, I, I can never do that. I don't, you know, there is, in my opinion, would benefit just being aware of these differences and maybe not a, attaching so much meaning to your man, quote, not listening. He may just be, you know, there may be no no meaning in it. He's not ignoring you. God knows why. Or, you know, the same thing that the woman, if she's talking to, you know, th that there's anything wrong. Just knowing that these differences exist and maybe have some, give each other some leeway there to avoid conflict, I, I think is one step in the right direction. Awareness is always the first step. And I guess what you're saying there, Silka, is you know, maybe divorces could be averted even by the awareness. Mm -hmm. I guess from a back 40 second half being the best half of life perspective, I guess I would say, and if we can start to play in these new realms and le learn these new skills, what if the relationship, that relationship that's been together 20, 30, 40 years even, what if it has a whole life ahead of it that could be any way beyond what's already been experienced. So it's kind of like a minimal is let's, if we want to keep the relationship together, keeping it together. But beyond that, it's like, whoa, what if we start to play with new things in our second half and experience new results? No, I, I agree with you 100%. It's that first step that I don't want, you know, I, 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 I want to encourage people not to be resistant maybe to, you know, jumping in 
you know, in the in the deep end where it is there is a way of tippy toeing into the yes. water that might be more comfortable where they actually take that step. <laughs> yeah, and you know, the first step might be to bring, uh, you know, to come to an agreement that let's bring someone in to help facilitate communication because. Going straight to that kind of responsible communication, you know, again, a lot of years of personal development, a lot of therapy, a lot of programs have gone into that. So maybe just bring somebody in, you know, to get started with it. Exactly. Well, we will link, of course, to all of your information uh, to the back 40. People can get in touch with you directly. And I thank you again. Always love talking to you, Daryl. Um, and we'll see you soon again on our second act. Thank you for everything you're doing for People's Second Act. Oh, so, uh, thank you, Daryl. See you soon. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right over here. When you click on through to YouTube, you'll see a little bell right next to the subscribe button. Hit that too and we'll notify you every time we release a new video. See you soon.